Hello and welcome back to our third chapter. Today we are going to go ahead with land, property and equipment. Okay. This is basically all your tangible fixed assets. Right. So we have land, building, plant, machinery, so on and so forth. Okay. First, let's see who do we call a plant, property and equipment. <coughs> and why do we study this chapter? This chapter is to help us understand how to do the valuation of all of these fixed assets, how to measure their value, when to recognize them, how to recognize them, how to do their presentation, their disclosure, so on and so forth. Okay, so what exactly are planned property and equipment? Planned property and equipment are held for use in the production or supply of goods and services. So they are basically used for the company to make its core activities, that is, goods and services. Or this plant property and equipment can also be used for renting to others or for administrative purposes. Okay, so what do I mean by each of this? First of all, let's say you are uh, in the process of making pencils. Then uh, go to YouTube and watch a video of fabric and how they make the pencils. So all their equipment, machinery, their tools and infrastructure, that will be their PP because that is used in the production of goods and services. Second one is if they have a land or building which they don't use for production but they use it to give to rent for others. Then that is rental to others. That will also be a part of PP. Even if you don't use it for uh, production of goods and services, you use it for renting it out to others. And the third thing is administrative purposes. You have a showroom or a building where you book your sales, market your products, uh, arrange for logistics, everything that is also called as PP. Okay. Secondly, they are expected to be used for more than one period. They are expected to be used for more than 12 months. Now, cost is basically the original value at which you acquired or constructed the asset. We all know what is cost. Residual value is at the time of selling this machinery or furniture, whatever scrap value you are getting is a residual value. Fair value, this also we have discussed last time, the market value, open market value between two unbiased parties. Depreciation, I know that you already know this, the reduction in the value of the asset due to time passing, due to wear and tear, due to obsolescence, redundancy, etc. Okay. Depreciable amount is the value of the asset that we depreciate over the years. Depreciable amount is original historical cost, that is the cost at which we acquired it, minus the residual value, minus the scrap value. Okay. Useful life. Useful life is the number of years over which we expect the asset to be used or the number of production of similar units, the number of units which we expect to be extracted from this asset. Okay. Carrying amount, carrying amount is basically original cost or historical cost minus depreciation for all these years. That is accumulated depreciation. Okay, that is carrying amount. So in this manner, we'll have an introduction of all the aspects of the asset. Now let's go into when can you recognize an asset. The recognition of plant property and equipment depends upon two things. First, it's probable that Future economic benefits are expected to be flown. Now, these future economic benefits can be of three types. Either you can get money by producing goods and services on them, or you can earn money by renting it out to them, or you can get money by booking your sales, doing marketing from that premises, that is admin purposes, thus indirectly turning it into economic benefits. So, either of these economic benefits should flow to the entity. The degree of certainty attached to the flow of economic benefits must be assessed. This should be based on the evidence at the date of initial recognition. So at the time of first recognition itself, you should check whether this asset is giving us, is going to give us economic benefits or not, right? Uh, the cost of the asset up to the entity can be measured reliably. It is generally easy to measure the cost of the asset as the transfer amount and purchase that is what we have paid for, okay? So while we are buying the asset, whatever consideration we have paid is the cost of the asset. For self-constructed, it is the total of all the costs that you have incurred for that asset, okay? We're going to dive into cost measurement more in detail here, okay? Initial measurement. So for initial measurement, what all is included in the cost of the asset and what all is not included, okay? Purchase price, that is obviously the payment upfront done to the supplier, right? 
purchase price minus any kind of trade discount or repeat any kind of discount that you get should be subtracted purchase price may you should add the import duties you should add only the non refundable taxes so obviously the refundable taxes should not be included because you are getting your money back directly attributable tax uh, cost for bringing the asset to its workable condition and for its intended use so employee benefit costs okay for example if you uh, took employees for uh, assembling the asset for transporting the asset site preparation that is making space for the asset or uh, you know conducive changes for the installation of the asset initial delivery and handling cost transportation installation as assembly because without installation and assembly you cannot use the asset if you cannot use the asset how will you get economic benefits out of the asset professional fees so this is generally incurred when we purchase assets like land or so where you need to pay the architect fees you need to pay the lawyers fees so professional fees will be included cost of testing the asset uh, doing a test check site restoration provision at the end of the asset for example you have a nuclear plant and obviously those radiations create damage to the soil on which the plant is based so at the end it is mandatory to restore the uh, land to its original position so site restoration <coughs> sorry and finance cost that is capitalized for qualifying assets finance costs are basically if you don't have the money to pay for this asset immediately what you do is you take the money on a loan or borrow the money so that you can uh, pay it later so this finance cost the interest that we incur on in it will it be capitalized or not that is the question okay now which cost will not be included the cost of opening a new facility the cost of introducing a new product or service cost of conducting business in a new location or with a new class of customer and general overhead because general overheads are not specific to this asset so they won't be included okay so in this uh, the following costs are therefore not included cost incurred when an item capable of operating has not been put into use or is less than full capacity initial operating losses and cost of relocating so if you see any of these costs they are not capitalized in the value of the pp okay uh, the above costs are only included in the value of the pp okay now once you're done with initial measurement how do you do the subsequent measurement so after the initial measurement year on year how do you value this asset so there are two methods that you can use first method is what we call as the historical cost model historical cost model basically values the asset at whatever is the original price and it deducts depreciation and impairment out of it impairment we will discuss a bit later i will show you how this method works okay so for example in 2014 i purchased a machinery for 350000 okay i am going to recognize it at 350000 itself no change doesn't matter what the market value is i am going to recognize it at 350000 itself okay now the scrap value is uh let's say 10000 okay and i am going to depreciate it over useful life is 7 years so obviously how do i find out so obviously it's an slm method so what do i do original cost minus scrap value that divided by the useful life so every year depreciation is almost 50000 roughly 50000 okay so what i do is year one depreciation and since it is slm depreciation would be same every year so after i deduct the depreciation i can get the carrying amount obviously depreciation will be deducted from the original cost for the purpose of calculating depreciation i take scrap value but depreciation will be deducted from the original cost so this is my carrying amount that is cost minus accumulated depreciation year 1 mein to accumulated kuch nahi hai because ek hi saal hua hai year 2 mein i'll show you how is the accumulated so year 2 mein you will have original cost minus your one ka depreciation minus your two ka depreciation okay your three mein same amount carrying amount again original cost minus your one ka depreciation minus your two ka depreciation minus your three ka depreciation okay 
so on and so forth. So that is how we use the historical cost model. Now I'll help you to understand how do we do the uh, revaluation model. <coughs> the revaluation model is where the asset is revalued at the market value on that date, whatever is the fair value. From it, we deduct depreciation and we deduct impairment losses. Okay. I-16 makes clear that fair value only when we can measure it reliably, we can use this method. Otherwise, we have to get back to the cost method. So how does a revaluation method work? Okay. Same scenario, 2014, I purchased a machine. Same for 3,50,000, correct? Uh, scrap is also the same. And life is also the same, yeah? So now, how do I manage the, uh, how do I manage the depreciation? Okay, so year one, we don't have any change. So year one, we, I can normally depreciate. So we are going to do 3,40,000 divided by 7, exactly like we did here. So I'll get 48,571. This is for year one and carrying amount is the same. Carrying amount is, right? Okay, at the end of year one, I realized that the market value or the fair value of this asset is actually 3,60,000, right? So what I do is I revise the value of this asset to 3,60,000. So now I'm not going to depreciate on 3,50,000. I'm going to depreciate on 3,60,000, okay? So 3,60,000, again, I deduct. No need to uh, deduct scrap value here. The exam question will explain to you if scrap value is to be deducted or not again. But since it is the market value, scrap value need not be deducted. Now we are going to depreciate 3,60,000. But for how many years? So when I originally purchased this asset, the useful life was 7 years. But now 1 year has passed. So now I need to depreciate this asset only for 6 years. So every year the depreciation will be 60,000. So as you can see earlier, the depreciation was 48,000. But because of this revaluation, it has increased to 60,000. <coughs> In this manner, uh, a revaluation model will not just increase the value of the asset or decrease, not compulsory increase, decrease we have but also change the depreciation. Okay. So uh, this is how we use a revaluation model. Now. Uh, depreciation. You all know what depreciation is, so I'm not going to go in depth for the definition. We'll just do the uh, sum where we I will show you how in each method the depreciation is calculated. So SLM reducing balance and as per the number of units. So we have a we have an asset which is costing seventeen thousand, expected to last for five years. So underline the key points in your exam to and scrap value of 2000 okay so first of all the slm method slm method is very simple 17000 minus a residual value divided by useful life so every year the depreciation is 3000 so at the year end of year one carrying amount will be as I said, carrying amount is historical cost minus depreciation. So 17 minus 3000, which is 14,000. Second year, the carrying amount will be 17,000 minus 3000 minus second year, 3000, which is 11,000. So on and so forth. Correct. So carrying amount is cost minus accumulated depreciation. So this is how SLM will work. Now let's see how would WDV work. Okay. So with WDV, what I will do is, I will do the reducing balance and they have given a percent of 35%. In WDV, calculating the carrying amount is more important. SLM may be calculate karna hai, but WDV might is more important. One caution to take care in WDV is we don't deduct the scrap value at the first. So pay attention, 17,000 is the original value. Okay. In the first year, depreciation, Depreciation will be 17,000 35%, which is 5950. And hence the carrying amount I do 
11.50. Correct? In the second year, I will do not 17,000 ka 35%, but 11.50 ka 35%. Correct? I deduct this. I get the carrying amount. Carrying amount is historical cost minus depreciation for all the years. Correct? Third year, again, 7183 into 35%. On the carrying amount, I calculate depreciation, not on the historical cost. Okay. Deduct all the depreciation so that you find the carrying amount for fourth year. Okay. Fourth year depreciation on the carrying amount again. Okay, and fifth year depreciation. Now, fifth year, I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to calculate the depreciation in 35% because I know at the end of fifth year, my assets value is going to be 2000. I'm going to make it 2000 because the scrap value is 2000. So, I'm going to just subtract whatever is a difference between these two and show that as the depreciation. Okay, I hope you understood. If you actually calculate the percent of this, it is 34%. So, it is basically just a rounding difference. But for accurate amount, I'm just going to calculate the difference between these two. This is how I calculated the WDB method. Now, last is based on the number of units. Okay. So, number of units each year they have taken that number of days. Sorry, not units. So, 200, 100, 100, 150, 40. So, total is. Five ninety. Okay, so here one I will do depreciation, two hundred divided by total of five ninety into uh, fifteen thousand again. Okay, that is five zero eight five. This is year one. Year two, uh, it's hundred days. Total remains the same into fifteen thousand. Right. Don't forget to reduce the scrap value. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Third year, again 100 days, so same 100. Fourth year, 150 days, so 150 divided by 590 into 15,000. And fifth year, 40 divided by 590 into 15,000. Right? So, if we do an addition of all of this, it is coming to 15,000, which is the total amount I want to depreciate over the five years. Okay. So, I hope you are clear with SLM, reducing balance and machine arm method. All right. Now, how do you value for revaluations? If the revaluation method is applied, make sure that you apply it to the whole class of assets. If you are revaluing buildings, you cannot revalue one building into it. You have to revalue the whole class. An increase in value is credited to OCI and presented an equity. Okay. A decrease in value is after cancelling a reserve. So, what do I mean by this? Okay. Now, I'm sure that you've done an FA that after PNL, we make another account which we call as the OCI. This is for unrealized gains and losses. A revaluation is not an actual gain because we have not sold the asset till now. It's just what the market value is today. Okay. So if you have an upward valuation, like our example, mein, 3 lakh 50,000 I purchased the asset. After one year, it became 3 lakh 60,000. If you have an upward revaluation, you take it to the credit of OCI. You say the revaluation increase. Yes. And you write whatever is the increase, let's say 10,000. Where does it go? It goes in the head equity. In equity, there are different reserves. In the reserves, we have a reserve we call as a revaluation surplus. Okay. So we take it in this reserve revaluation surplus. The other effect goes to increase the value of the asset. So the asset was previously whatever it was. We increase 10,000 in it because it is an upward increase and we value the asset. So, the first effect from OCI goes to revaluation surplus. <coughs> Sorry. The second effect goes in the 
valuation of the asset. Okay. Revaluation surplus. Now there are two things in revaluation surplus. The treatment is different if the asset is depreciable or if the asset is non-depreciable. If it is a depreciable asset, or if it is a non-depreciable asset, sorry, I simply pass the entry carrying amount account debit to OCI if it is an upward increase. So I will show you what I mean. Which is the only uh, asset which is non-depreciable? Land. So for example, in 2018, I buy a block of land for 50 lakhs. Okay. In 2019, its value has become 70 lakhs. So how much is the upward increase? 20 lakhs. So I write a revaluation surplus in my OCI and I take 20 lakhs. Correct. In reserves, revaluation surplus, I take 20 lakhs. Now for under non-current assets, land was previously 50 lakhs. I add the upward revaluation 20 lakhs. Now my land is 70 lakhs. And the entry that I pass is and account debit to OCI, that is revaluation surplus. Okay, how much? 20 and 20. Right? So, in this manner, we pass the entry and do the upward revaluation. Let me give you an example. Pinky had a year end of 30th June 2013. On 1st of July 2012, that is one year back, it purchased a land <coughs> sorry, at a cost of 1,20,000 and it incurred legal fees for 5,000. So these are professional, we need to add them. Due to a surge in the prices, the fair value rose to 1,50,000 after one year. That is on 30th June 2013. Calculate the revaluation surface. Now, as you can see, the original price we have to give as 125. After one year, it became 150. So, how much is the revaluation surplus? 25. I pass an entry land account debit to OCI, which goes to revaluation surplus. How much? 25. Okay. I hope this is clear. Now, we are going to see what will happen if there is a downward revaluation. Okay. All right. So what exactly happens when there is a revaluation decrease? Okay. So with a revaluation decrease, any decrease should be taken as an expense in P&L except when it is offsetting a previous revaluation surplus. So what do we mean by this? Okay. Uh, if an asset has previously suffered a decrease, any increase in value subsequently should be first taken to P&L to the extent it reverses the previous decrease. Excess should be taken to revaluation surplus. So I will first explain to you how do you book the revaluation decrease. A revaluation decrease is when the market value falls below your carrying amount. Okay, so we have two examples. First is in the original example, your land ka hai, after three years the value goes down to 130,000. And second is where it goes down to 120,000. So we know that originally is land ka kitna tha value in our example mein 1,25 correct which was purchased in 2012. In 2013 it became 1,50,000. So I did revaluation surplus of 25,000, reserve 25, kitha 125, 25 and 150 correct and this entry is passed by 25. Okay, hope this is clear. This is just the previous question that we did. Now its value after three years has been dropped to 130. So if the value has been dropped, we have to first identify whether it is going to be, so sorry, whether it is going to be taken, can be taken from the revaluation surplus or not. What do I mean by this? How much is my current surplus? 25. This means that upward mira surplus 25. Hai. Abhi mira loss kitna hua hai? Mira loss y minus 20. This means that right now my surplus is enough to fulfill this loss. So whatever loss till 25, my first I will take it from revaluation surplus. Uske baad agar kuch laga, to I will take it to PL. So abhi my revaluation surplus is enough to uh, you know to uh, put this loss, to use for this loss. So what is the entry that I'm going to pass? OCI account debit, ULTA. Okay. 
account debit and obviously the land key value is going to decrease how much 20 so in 2016 i will pass an entry a revaluation surplus 20 and uh, pe i will reduce i will say land or downward revaluation In 2016, I will reduce 20. So now my reserve only stands at 5. Correct? From land as well, I will say downward revaluation. So I will reduce 20 from land. And now my land ka value is only 130. So in this manner, a downward revaluation would be adjusted. But what if the downward revaluation is more than it? That is, it's 120. Now in this case, the total loss is 30. Right. I'll just hide this case for a minute. Now, in this case, the total loss is 30. But in my revaluation, I have only 25. So, as much as I have in the revaluation, I will use it. Correct? So, my revaluation surplus, same entry, but I will pass for 30 now. So, OCI will debit only by 25 because my revaluation surplus is 25. Correct? <clears throat> so, OCI, I will debit fully 25. Yahan se I will take 25. So, abhi mere revaluation mein kuch nahi bacha hai. Correct? Land, obviously, I will deduct with the full amount. Because land to pura 30 se reduce hona chahi. Right? So, land mein pura 30 se reduce kiya. And land ka jo market value hai. I will bring it down to that. Which is 120. But, for ye entry match nahi ho rahi Baki ka patch kahan se leke jayenge? Baki ka patch, I'll take from P and L. So my entry goes, full revaluation I have used, so debit 25, P and L debit 5, and 2 lakh 30. Okay? Abhi, if this is clear, one more step is, which is not given in this question. I'm taking one more step. Apna hai question yaha pe khatam hua. One more step is, let's say in 2018. Okay, hum sirf scenario 2 ki baat kar rahe abhi. Jab the market value is 120, where we needed to use P and L, correct? Now in 2018, the market value rose to 140. If it rose to 140 now, from 120 it has gone 140, so 20 increase hai, correct? Okay, agar 20 increase hai, then pura revaluation surplus ko leke jaunge kya? The answer is no. Why no? Because in this scenario, I used P and L. I used P and L by 5, correct? So hence, when I do a upward revaluation now, I will first remove this 5. I will first give P and L credit 5. Baki ka, I will send to uh, revaluation service. So let me explain you how this works. Okay. First of all, obviously, <coughs> land will be increased. Land will be increased how much? Total. Total kitna hai? 20. Correct? 2. To P and L. P and L kyun? Kyunki pehle mene jo ye loss book kiya tha 5 ka usko mein recover karungi. To 2 P and L 5. And 2 OCI revaluation surplus. Uske baad jo bhi bachta hai wo mein revaluation surplus ko leke jaungi. Which is how much? 50. Okay. <coughs> I hope that is clear. So therefore revaluation surplus I take care only 15. Not full 20. Revaluation surplus mein mein I don't have space here, so I will write 15. Pehle 0 ho gaya tha, plus 15. <coughs> P&L ko mein leke jaungi 5 credit side pe, because it's a gain. And uh, land ko, again positive revaluation, pura 20. So land will become whatever is the market value, which is 140. Okay. I hope all scenarios are clear for downward revaluation. Let's continue. All right. Now, revaluation of depreciated assets. This is very important. We have given land ka example, which is a very simple example hai because land is a non-depreciated asset. But what happens when we have depreciable assets? Like most of the assets, building, actually all assets other than land, building, machinery, furniture, etc. Okay. If you have started revaluation starting of the year, mein hua hai, to obviously, in that year, your depreciation will change. अगर आपका revaluation end of the year में हुआ है, जैसे मैंने example लिया था, तो uh, 
2014 का डेप्रिसिएशन चेंज मत करो 2015 का चेंज करो मतलब द डेप्रिसिएशन चेंज विल बी फ्रॉम द नेक्स्ट ईयर एंड इफ इट इज समवेयर इन द मिडल व्हिच ऑब्वियसली व्हाट हैपेंस इन रियल लाइफ और यू कुड टेक इट इन द मिडल देन इट इज ऑन मंथली बेसिस ओके सो डेप्रिसिएशन एंड रीवैल्यूएशन सर्विस अभी डेप्रिसिएशन एंड रीवैल्यूएशन सर्विस समझते समय we have to understand the concept which we call as excess depreciation so what is the meaning of excess depreciation as i said hamare example mein pehle asset ka value tha 350000 uske baad ek saal ke baad we took it 360000 correct so what is the new asset ka value 360000 but because of this increase my va- depreciation value went from 48,000 to 60,000. So therefore, my depreciation increased by how much? So basically, my expense increased by how much? 11,000. Because of this, shareholders started to feel that in 2015 we have incurred a loss of 11,000, or our profit has decreased by 11,000. Is that accurate? No. Actually, it shows an ulta picture. It shows a picture that the business is booming. that is why uh, the assets value is increasing and that is why this additional expenditure it is not an indication of reduced profit so in order to clear this confusion companies are allowed to do one accounting adjustment this accounting adjustment is for excess depreciation okay so what adjustment do i give so first of all before i explain you what is excess depreciation how do we account for the revaluation of depreciable assets as i said that for non depreciable assets the entry is very simple i just do land account debit to oci if it is a positive revaluation if it's not we have explained below but if it's a depreciable asset then how do i do the accounting okay first of all i say asset account debit so for example let's say it's a machine machine account debit to a revaluation surplus okay machine account debit <coughs> sorry accumulated depreciation account debit to revaluation service now what exactly do i mean by this let me explain to you but to explain you this i am going to do a small alteration in 2014 the machine was taken at 350000 scrap 10000 life seven years depreciation first year 48571 carrying amount is given अच्छा 2015 में भी ये चलता गया ठीक है 2015 में भी ये चलता गया तो ईयर टू का डेप्रिसिएशन इज आल्सो गोइंग टू बी द सेम राइट एंड ईयर टू के कैरिंग अमाउंट विल बी 350000 माइनस ईयर 1 डेप्रिसिएशन माइनस ईयर 2 डेप्रिसिएशन सो दिस इज द कैरिंग अमाउंट करेक्ट अभी 2016 में क्या हुआ है कि ये वैल्यू इंक्रीज हो गया लेट्स कीप इट इंक्रीज टू थ्री लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड सर बट नाउ आई विल नॉट एप्रिशिएट फॉर सिक्स इयर्स बिकॉज टू इयर्स हैव ऑलरेडी पास्ड आई विल ओनली एप्रिशिएट फॉर फाइव इयर्स व्हिच इज सेवेंटी टू थाउजेंड नाउ ओके सो द एप्रिसिएशन इज इंक्रीज नाउ आई एम एक्सप्लेन टू यू वाई आई एम डूइंग दिस ओके जस्ट रिमूव दिस बेसिस टू ब्रिंग इट क्लोज अप Yes. So first of all, what is the entry that I pass for a revaluation? For revaluation, I pass this entry: machine account debit, मतलब asset account debit, accumulated depreciation account debit to OCI. That is revaluation surplus. So why exactly am I passing this entry? First of all, obviously because the value of the asset is increasing or decreasing, the asset will be given effect. Here it's increasing, so machine account is debited. This is very simple. Why are we debiting accumulated depreciation? Now you have to understand why depreciation is provided. Depreciation is provided because the asset ka value drops every year. Correct? Now this is actually not true for this asset. We had given depreciation for year one and two, assuming that the asset ka value is reducing. But actually, at year three we realized that the asset ka value is much more. So was there any reason to reduce this value of the asset? No, because the asset ka value has actually not dropped. It has increased when we came to the third year. 
That is why whatever decrease in the value we had booked so far through accumulated depreciation, I am going to cancel it out. Clear? When I pass the entry of depreciation, I pass the entry, you would have already done this depreciation to accumulated depreciation. So to cancel out this depreciation, I am going to give an ulta effect, which is debit. Okay. Now, what amount to give to each of them? There are formulas for each. For machine account debit, <coughs> it is the difference between, first of all, let's go to, I'll explain to you others and then you will understand. For OCI, it is the difference between fair value and carrying amount. Okay. So, let's do the first one. What is the fair value? 360000 As on that date, that is the end of year 2, what is the carrying amount? 252 857 as we calculated. So, what is the revaluation surplus as we calculated? Accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is nothing but the addition of all the years of depreciation, which is how much? 48 plus 48. Okay. Whatever is the remainder will be the increase in the value of the asset. So, increase in the value of the asset is 10,000. If you want to cross check it, if you have realized great, this is basically the difference between aap kiska difference le sakte ho ye? Ma, uh, ma, fair value or cost ka. So, ye basically fair value or cost ka agar aapne difference nikala, to ho utna hi aata hai. Correct? In this manner, hum ye original revaluation for depreciable asset ki entry pass kar rahe. Okay. Now that we have passed this, I hope you understood this. Now that we have passed this, we pass the excess depreciation. So basically, confusion will come to understand that shareholders will think that 23,000 excess cost is coming. I mean, 23,000 is our profit coming. We are trying to convince them that no, it's actually a sign good for the business because our uh, assets are increasing. That's why depreciation is increasing. So to avoid this confusion, what you do is every year, which is excess depreciation, you will reduce the revaluation surplus from the revaluation surplus. Utna amount kam karoge. So whenever I give a positive to revaluation surplus, I do credit. So if I am removing amount, I do a debit. And I take this amount to a reserve which I call as retained earnings. What am I exactly doing here? A revaluation surplus. Hamare example me. Revaluation surplus ka balance kitna tha? I'll just edit a couple of columns. Hamare example me. A revaluation surplus ka balance tha, jo uh, reserves mein hota hai na, uska balance tha 1,7,142. Abhi isse har saal, I am going to remove the excess depreciation. Because this ex excess depreciation is caused due to this. That is why it's only right to reduce excess depreciation from this. How do I calculate the excess depreciation? It is a difference between my new depreciation and my old depreciation. Okay, so ye ho gaya first year ka, so mera revaluation surplus 2016 ka end mein kitna dekhe ga? 83,000 something. Or retained earnings, retained earnings is basically the total of all the profits. So let's say all the profits till now have been 5 lakhs. Okay, abhi is mein I will add the excess depreciation just to assure the shareholders that look our retained earnings have not been affected. This is just an accounting entry, jaise retained earnings के ऊपर excess depreciation का कोई भी impact नहीं हुआ है. So basically as if earnings are we taking effect of 48,000 only. Okay, I hope you understood. Second year this is going to be the same. I am going to deduct from this and I am going to add into the uh, retained earnings. Okay, please understand this entry cannot pass through p and L. This entry only passes through these two reserves. Revaluation service to RE which is the difference between new depreciation and old depreciation. Correct? I hope this is clear. So, in this manner, we will transfer the excess depreciation. Here is an example that the first depreciation is 2500. Hai. Revaluation is 3500. So, what do I do? Revaluation surplus to RE 1000. Clear? Alright. Now, revaluation and depreciation. We have an example here. Let's dive into it. <coughs> Sorry, Crinkle prepares its financial statements on 31st December every year. It bought an asset that had a useful life of 5 years for 10,000 in January 2016. 
okay on 1st of january 2018 that is two years later asset was revalued to 12000 expected life has remained unchanged it is a policy to ex uh, transfer the excess depreciation account for revaluation okay so how many asset khareedi kab thi 1st jan 2016 ko we purchased it at how much 10000 right okay aur ye kitna scrap value thi hai kya uh, no, they have not given you. It has to be depreciated over 5 years. So, obviously, we will assume SLM. So, every year ka depreciation is 2000, right? Now, on 1st of January 2018, this has been revalued to 12,000, correct? So, but important is to understand ki are 1st of January 2018 ko, hamare books mein value kya tha? carrying amount kya tha? This is the year one depreciation 2017 ka. 2018 ka jayega 2000. So, apna carrying amount hai 6000. Apna new value kitna hai 12000. So, upward revaluation kitna hai 6000. Okay. So, in this manner, we know that the revaluation will be 6,000. Let's pass the entry. Entry ke asset account debit. Asset concee, we don't know. Asset account debit, accumulated depreciation account debit to OCI. That is the revaluation service. Correct? Okay. Asset account debit formula ke fair value minus cost. Fair value kitna hai? We know 12,000. Cost kitna tha? 10,000. This comes to 2000. Accumulated depreciation, I have how much? 2000 plus 2000, which is 4000. Or thus, OCI, kya lete hum? Difference between fair value and carrying amount, which is fair value and carrying amount, which is how much? 12 and 6 ka difference. As you can see, your entry is also tally, right? 6,000 pay. Okay. Now, after doing this, how much is the excess depreciation? So, abhi 2018 ke baad, agar 2016 ke baad 5 saal the, to 2018 ke baad kitne saal bache? Sirf 3. And 12,000 divided by 3. So, how much is the depreciation every year? 4,000. So, from 4,000 to 2,000. So, excess depreciation kitna aya? 2000 every year. What is the entry I pass? My paleto revaluation surplus come karungi and retained earnings my padhangi. Correct? So revaluation surplus my dikhata originally kita dikhata 6000. Usse my minus kitna karungi 2000. Correct? So, which is the excess depreciation. Okay. So, your one k and my revaluation surplus is 4000. And what do I add to this? Retained earnings. Yes. This is the entry I will pass. Okay. I hope this full format is clear. We have two questions. <coughs> so, I hope there is no confusion. Okay. Now. Let's go ahead. Uh, activity 3. So, you have list price, diye, discount, diye. discount will be deducted, delivery cost added, and setup cost also added. Okay, the final cost of the asset diya hai. Theke? This asset was purchased in October, 1st of October 2014, and useful life of 12 years, scrap value of 2000. Uh, we are going to depreciate in the year of purchase fully, and no depreciation in the year of sale. Xavier ka policy of keeping all equipment at revalued amounts. No revaluation has been done, but on 30th of September 2018, we have done the revaluation. Okay? A specific market value for Xavier's machine was not available. So we couldn't get a machine similar who had been used for how many years? October 14th, se 30th September 2018. But we got a brand new machine. Which then costed 15 to 100. But this brand new machine is not 4 years old. 
उसका वैल्यू थर्टी एथ सेप्टेम्बर टू थाउजेंड एटीन को फिफ्टीन टू हंड्रेड है तो हमें उसका वैल्यू हमारे हिसाब से एडजस्ट करना पड़ेगा करेक्ट सो वी रीवैल्यू वी डिड द रीवैल्यूएशन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू ट्रांसफर द एक्सेस एप्रिसिएशन ठीक है पहले तो वट इज द कैरिंग अमाउंट ऑफ प्लांट एंड इक्विपमेंट ऑन थर्टी एथ ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन तो फर्स्ट ऑफ अक्टूबर फिफ्टीन को लिया है थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ अक्टूबर थर्टी एथ ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन को क्या वैल्यू है ठीक है एट वन फाइव सिक्स इज द वैल्यू राइट एट फाइव फाइव जीरो माइनस एट फिफ्टी फाइव प्लस वन जीरो फाइव प्लस थ्री फिफ्टी सिक्स सो एट वन फाइव सिक्स एट वन फाइव सिक्स माइनस क्रैप वैल्यू ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एंड दिस वी गुंड एप्रिशिएट ओवर ट्वेल्व इयर्स ये डेप्रिशिएट कर लो एट वन फाइव सिक्स माइनस फाइव वन थ्री इज योर कैरिंग अमाउंट सो योर कैरिंग अमाउंट फॉर फर्स्ट ईयर इज सेवन सिक्स फोर थ्री सिंपल नो रिवैल्यूएशन What is the carrying amount of the plant and equipment on 30th of September 2018? ठीक है सो ऑन थर्टी एथ ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर टू थाउजेंड एटीन उन्होंने पूछा है कि नए प्लांट का क्या वैल्यू होता है वेरी सिंपल सो वट डे आस्किंग इज ऑन थर्टी एथ ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर टू थाउजेंड एटीन यू नो दैट अ ब्रांड न्यू प्लांट वैल्यूज फिफ्टीन टू हंड्रेड बट हमारा प्लांट तो ब्रांड न्यू नहीं है हमारा प्लांट चार साल पुराना है तो अगर चार साल पहले ये लिया होता न्यू uh, एसेट तो उसका आज वैल्यू क्या होता दैट इज बेसिकली वॉट यू आर आस्किंग ओके सो वट डू आई मीन बाई दिस ट्वेल्व इन लाइफ है हमारा ब्रांड न्यू एसेट जो है वो फिफ्टीन टू हंड्रेड को आज मिल रहा है बट ये ब्रांड न्यू एसेट अगर चार साल पुराना चार साल पहले लिया होता तो उसका कंडीशन वुड बी सिमिलर टू व्हाट आर एसेट इज करेक्ट सो देर फोर वी आर रज्यूमिंग एज इफ दिस एसेट वाज परचेस्ड फोर इयर्स बैक सो इफ इट वाज परचेस्ड फोर इयर्स बैक व्हाट वुड हैव बीन इट्स वैल्यू टुडे दैट इज व्हाट यू आर आस्किंग यू सो 15 टू 100 माइनस क्रैप वैल्यू इसको हम डिप्रीशिएट करेंगे ओवर 12 इयर्स हर साल का डिप्रीशिएशन आ गया 1100 बट 2014 से लेकर 2018 तक चार साल हो गए हैं तो चार साल मल्टीप्लाइड बाय 1100 ये कितना आया 4400 और हिस्टोरिकल कॉस्ट माइनस अक्यूमुलेटेड डेप्रिसिएशन ये अगर किया तो मुझे कैरिंग अमाउंट मिलता है ओके व्हाई एक्सैक्टली इज दिस कैरिंग अमाउंट इंपॉर्टेंट तो हमने इस कैरिंग अमाउंट निकालने के बाद ये अज्यूम कर लिया वी हैव फाउंडेड दिस अज्यूमिंग दैट ये जो ब्रांड न्यू मशीन है अगर चार साल पहले लिया होता तो उसका आज कॉस्ट कितना था टेन विच इज वेरी सिमिलर टू आर एसेट बट हमारा एसेट चार साल पुराना हमने बुक्स में कितना दिखाया है सेवन सिक्स फोर थ्री सो इन दोनों का जो डिफरेंस है दैट इज बेसिकली माई रिवैल्यूएशन ओके ये लॉजिक है दैट इज वाई वी वेंट बैक विद दिस एसेट फोर इयर्स एंड फाउंड इट्स वैल्यू टूडे ओके आई होप दिस इज क्लियर सो दैट गिव्स एस दी आंसर ऑफ टेन एट हंड्रेड विच टू ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट आर करेक्ट वन रिवैल्यूंग पीपी All PP should be revalued, not compulsory, but all PP in the same class should be. Revaluation should take place through three to five years, not necessary. <clears throat> revalued assets continue to be depreciated, yes, and assets should be revalued at fair value, absolutely yes. So three and four. What is the balance of the revaluation surplus on thirtieth of September two thousand eighteen? Okay, so yes, up. करने के बाद जैसे I said that हमारे old machine का ये carrying amount है, correct? अगर न्यू मशीन चार साल पहले लिया होता तो उसका कैरिंग अमाउंट है टेन एट हंड्रेड सो बेसिकली माई रिवैल्यूशन टोटल इज थ्री वन फाइव सेवन ओके आई कैन पास इन एंट्री फॉर यू एसेट अकाउंट डेबिट अक्यूमुलेटेड डेप्रिसिएशन अकाउंट डेबिट टू ओ सी आई विच इज रिवैल्यूशन सर्प्लस या ओके एसेट अकाउंट डेबिट कितना वी हैव फेयर वैल्यू माइनस कॉस्ट अक्यूमुलेटेड आई टेल यू हाउ टू डू इट 
and OCI is fair value minus carrying out. So OCI I have already calculated fair value kitna hai? 10 800 because oh, naya machine char sal ke hai. <coughs> Sorry, and old machine ka hai 7643. So this is D157. Asset ka cost kitna hai? Asset ka cost fair value kitna hai? 10 800. Minus asset liya kitne pe tha? Liya tha 8156 pe. Correct? So 8156. So in dono difference jo bhi hai, that is your asset account debit. Or accumulated depreciation. यहाँ पे हमने निकालते वक्त देखा है कि एक साल का depreciation कितना है। तो इसको अगर चार साल से multiply करोगे, you will get the accumulated depreciation, which is how much? Two zero five two. Just a second, we have done something different here because the both the amount should match each other. OCI का value है ten eight hundred और seven six four three का difference ये तो बिल्कुल correct है। Accumulated depreciation भी correct है। <coughs> Fair value less cost. Then eight hundred less eight one five six. Ah, I re I understood. अब हमने carrying amount गलत किया है. क्यों carrying amount गलत किया है? When we did 8156-513, we just took depreciation for one year. That's not correct. We have to take accumulated depreciation because 4 years have So I have to deduct this value. Correct? So, after 4 years of depreciation, I have to take this carrying amount. And this is my revaluation surplus. So, now revaluation surplus is right. And if we match, both of these are matching. So, basically, I previously just had depreciation for one year. We have to do it for four years. That is why it is getting a difference. So, up here, how much revaluation surplus is there? Four six nine six. Okay. How much of the revaluation surplus is transferred to RE? This means how much excess depreciation is there? Right. Excess depreciation. For now, what is the new value of the asset I am going to do? Ten eight hundred. For how many years am I going to depreciate? Four years. It means I am going to depreciate for eight four years. Correct. So, my new depreciation is 1350. My new depreciation is 513. So, excess depreciation is 837. So, for 837, you know the entry revaluation service account debit to RE. Kitna? Okay. New minus old depreciation. Don't forget to change the number of years. I hope this is clear. Now we'll go on to assets which have different parts and each part has different useful life. Okay. Okay. Now, if assets have different useful lives, what exactly do we do with them? So, for example, there is a aeroplane which has a fuselage of 20,000 cost with 20 years and a carriage 5,000 with 500 landings, engines 8,000 with 1,600 flying gas. So, how do you calculate a depreciation? Very simple. You calculate depreciation separately. So, for fuselage, you do 20,000 divided by 20 years. Undercarriage, 5,000. This year, 150. So, into 150 divided by total of 500, right? And engines, 8,000 into this year, 400 as divided by 1,600 total. So, you simply do it individually. If there is a replacement of or overall, overhaul, parts of some items of Land property and equipment may require replacement at regular intervals of it as a legal requirement. IL-16 gives examples of a purchase that may require relining after a specified number of hours. Or an aircraft uh, that requires interior change. The cost of the replacement should be recognized in full and it should be depreciated over its useful life. So what do I mean by this? For example, there is a... Uh, Taking the above example itself, we have to do an overhaul of major parts. And this overhaul has to be done every three years. And it is costing us 1.2 million. Then how do I do this? Okay. So, we have fuselage, undercarriage, engines ka separately depreciation. Kar diya hai. 
ओवरऑल का भी वन पॉइंट टू मिलियन आई विल डेप्रिशिएट ओवर थ्री इयर्स दैट इज फोर हंड्रेड आफ्टर थ्री इयर्स अगेन वन पॉइंट टू आई विल कैपिटलाइज डेप्रिशिएट ओवर थ्री इयर्स ओके दिस विल कट द रिंग ओके नाउ आफ्टर वी हैव कंसिडर्ड प्लांट एंड प्रॉपर्टी एंड इक्विपमेंट विच विल बी यूज फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस वे गुड कंसिडर द नेक्स्ट टाइप वेर प्लांट प्रॉपर्टी एंड इक्विपमेंट इज सिंपली परचेस्ड टू बी गिवन ऑन अ रेंट टू अदर्स दैट इज investment property so investment property is basically where is basically where uh we use this plant that is land or building to give on rent or we use it basically for its value to be appreciated and rent to be sold so we're not using it for production of goods and services like we do for other pp or for admin purposes too or we are not using it as inventory to like a builder or constructor who uses them as inventory we are not using it for that owner occupied property is not included in this okay fair value we already know market value cost carrying amount is the amount in our books okay cost is the value at which we originally purchased this land or building or at which we acquired it correct recognition is same where it is probable that future economic benefits will flow and its cost can be measured reliably right initial measurement same purchase price all the expenses given above all of them directly attributable expenses okay subsequent measurement now subsequent measurement is where the pp and ip that is investment property differ significantly okay if you using the cost model for investment property then you do at it historical cost and depreciation simple so for example if it is land लैंड पे तो डेप्रीसिएशन होता ही नहीं है सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू परचेस लैंड एट इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व फॉर ट्वेंटी लैक्स टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन ऑल्सो यू शो इट एट ट्वेंटी लैक्स फोर्टीन एट ट्वेंटी लैक्स वन एंड शोफ इग्नोर द मार्केट वैल्यू बट इफ यू हैव अ बिल्डिंग एंड यू हैव परचेस इट इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व फॉर लेट्स ए ट्वेंटी लैक्स एंड इट हैज अजफुल लाइफ ऑफ ट्वेंटी ईयर्स देन यू चार्ज डेप्रीसिएशन एवरी ईयर ऑफ 1 lakhs ignore the market value okay but if you use the fair value then the fair value has to be compulsorily checked at the end of every year this is not compulsory for pp but it is compulsory for uh, ip investment property any gain or loss in the fair value jahan pe hum upar lete the revaluation surplus pe yahan pe compulsory it has to be taken through p and l okay and no matter what the asset is land or building it is never depreciated So, if we have fair value under investment property, it is never depreciated. So, all of these three things are unique to IP, that is investment property, which are not applicable to PP. So, for example, you're doing fair value. 2012 land is <coughs> 20. 2015 is 25. Five you take to P and L. Uh, 2014 is 22. Minus three you take to P and L. So on and so forth. डेप्रीसिएशन का क्वेश्चन एनी वे आता नहीं है टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व बिल्डिंग इज ट्वेंटी नो नीड टू गिव डेप्रीसिएशन इन दिस टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन इट्स ट्वेंटी फाइव फाइव यू टेक टू पी एंड टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन इट्स माइनस फोर यू टेक टू पी एंड सो ऑन एंड सोफर लेट्स नाइनटीन माइनस सिक्स यू टेक टू पी एंड so a uh, no question of depreciation even for a building this is unique for investment property if you uh, do one uh, class of asset in investment property you have to revalue all of them same logic okay on 1st of october 2019 uh, propex had the following properties tenant house which cost 150000 on 1st of october it was rented to private individuals the current value is 175 stove place which cost 75000 it is used as its headquarters the building was acquired on 1st of october 2019 and its current fair value is uh, 120000 okay so carrying amount so first of all uh, for a uh, tenant you will use it for 175000 tenant qualifies as a uh, investment property stove is used as its headquarters so for administration so it does not qualify as its uh pp uh, so as its investment property it will be qualified as pp because aap stove uh, rent pe nahi de raha so its current value is 
तो आप 120 लोगे फर्स्ट ऑफ अक्टूबर पे और आप उस पे ऊपर डेप्रीसिएशन चार्ज करोगे टू परसेंट पर आनम राइट तो जो भी डेप्रीसिएशन के बाद आता है वेन इज इट रिवैल्यू इट्स रिवैल्यू एट द एंड ऑफ द ईयर ओके तो आप इस साल डेप्रीसिएशन नहीं करोगे अगले साल आप टू परसेंट इसके ऊपर डेप्रीसिएशन करोगे राइट बिकॉज इट इज अ रेगुलर पीपी ओके नाउ दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वॉट डू यू डू वेन यू ट्रांसफर योर एसेट्स फ्रॉम इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी टू पीपी और फ्रॉम पीपीए टू इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो ऐसा हो सकता है कि आपने पहले एक बिल्डिंग लिया था सिर्फ रेंट पे देने के लिए बट नाउ यूर एक्सपैंडिंग योर बिजनेस एंड यू नीड टू सेट अप योर ऑफिस देर सो यूर ट्रांसफरिंग दैट फ्रॉम इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी टू पीपी सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ जैन टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन यू परचेस्ट इट एज एन आई पी करेक्ट सिंपल आई पी था अगर फेयर वैल्यू मेथड यूज कर रहे हो तो नो डेप्रीसिएशन राइट फेयर वैल्यू नहीं यूज कर रहे हो तो डेप्रीसिएशन होगा ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन दैट इज सिक्स ईयर सिक्स मंथ लेटर यू डिसाइड टू चेंज इट टू पीपीए अभी डज नॉट मैटर वॉट योर कैरिंग अमाउंट इज वॉट एवर इज द फेयर वैल्यू ऑन दैट डेट दैट विल बी द अमाउंट ऑफ योर ट्रांसफर सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट चैन पे यू परचेज दिस बिल्डिंग फॉर लेट से फिफ्टी लैक्स ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन पे वट एवर इज द फेयर वैल्यू लेट से द फेयर वैल्यू इज सिक्सटी लैक्स सो यू विल ट्रांसफर इट टू पीपी एट सिक्सटी लैक्स ऑब्वियसली पीपी में इवन इफ वी वैल्यू एज पर द फेयर वैल्यू और द हिस्टोरिकल कॉस्ट वील नीड टू चार्ज डेप्रीसिएशन तो आप सिक्स मंथ्स का डेप्रीसिएशन चार्ज करोगे और उसके बाद यू विल फाइंड आउट द कैरिंग अमाउंट एज अ पीपी सो इन दिस मैनर फेयर डेप्रीसिएशन विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द स्टेट एंड आप कॉस्ट या फेयर वैल्यू जो भी मॉडल आप यूज करना चाहते हैं वो यूज कर सकते हो ठीक है फॉर द पीपी बट ऑब्वियसली पीपी होने के बाद डेप्रीसिएशन तो होगा आईपी में भी डेप्रीसिएशन होगा इफ इट इज अंडर कॉस्ट मॉडल अंडर रिवैल्यूएशन मॉडल डेप्रीसिएशन नहीं होगा करेक्ट इन दिस मैनर देर विल बी अ ट्रांसफर इफ इट इज फ्रॉम इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी टू पीपी वट इफ इट इज फ्रॉम पीपीए टू इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी ओके अप्लाई आई सिक्सटीन टू द डेट ऑफ चेंज दैट इज यहाँ पे अभी सिक्स मंथ का डेप्रीसिएशन होगा नॉर्मल जो भी डेप्रीसिएशन होता है करेक्ट बिकॉज इन दिस केस इट इज अ पीपीए ह्योर सो इट डजेंट मैटर एंड पीपीए कॉस्ट और रिवेल्यूशन मॉडल यहाँ पे डेप्रीसिएशन होगा एट द डेट ऑफ चेंज वैल्यूएटेड फेयर वैल्यू सेम लॉजिक ओके एक सेकेंड हाँ ऊपर जो भी डिफरेंस आता है फेयर वैल्यू पे दैट विल गो टू रिवेल्यूशन सर्विस वाई बिकॉज नाउ इट इज अ पीपी एंड वट एवर इज द न्यू फॉर्म उसके हिसाब से रूल अप्लाई होगा सो सिंस इट इज नाउ पीपी जो भी इसका डिफरेंस है फेयर वैल्यू एंड कैरिंग अमाउंट दैट विल टेक टू रिवेल्यूशन सर्विस बट अगर उल्टे जा रहे हैं मतलब पीपी से इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी जा रहे हैं तो जो भी इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी का जो फेयर वैल्यू डिफरेंस आता है वो हम कहाँ पे लेके जाते हैं पी एंड एल में करेक्ट तो ये जो भी डिफरेंस है वो लेके जाएंगे हम पी एंड एल में बिकॉज नाउ द न्यू फॉर्म इज इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी आई होप दिस इज क्लियर उसके बाद uh, आप प्रॉपर्टी वैल्यू करोगे फेयर वैल्यू या कॉस्ट मॉडल पे बहुत इज ओके कॉस्ट मॉडल पे करोगे uh, और तो डेप्रीसिएशन आएगा फेयर वैल्यू पे करोगे तो नहीं आएगा एंड नाउ इट इज शोन एज एन आई पी ओके so in this manner we'll do the transfer from ip to pp or pp to ip i have an example here uh owns a building which was previously a head office in order to cut uh, reduce cost it moved its head office to one of its production centers and now letting out its head office okay so pp to ip uh uses a fair value for ip okay building had an original cost on 1 july 2010 for 250000 and depreciated over 50 years Nine years later, that is 38 June 2019. Pay, sorry, nine and a half years later, uh, you transfer it as IP, and fair value is 3 lakh 50 thousand. At the end of the year, the value has fallen to 320. Okay. पहले तो आपने लिया कब था? First of uh, January 2020, 2010. Sorry. <coughs> आपने लिया था कितने प्राइस पे? टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड करेक्ट ओके ना आप जब ट्रांसफर कर रहे हो आपने कितने साल का डेप्रीसिएशन दिया है इसके ऊपर आप ट्रांसफर कर रहे हो आई थिंक 
31 जून 2019 को तो आपने इस ड्यूरेशन में कितने साल हो गए नाइन एंड हाफ इयर्स राइट सो टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड टोटल लाइफ इज फिफ्टी ईयर्स आउट ऑफ विच नाइन एंड हाफ इयर्स बी पास्ट सो वॉट इज अक्यूमुलेटेड एप्रिसिएशन फोर्टी सेवन फाइव हंड्रेड सो एज ऑफ दिस डेट एज ऑफ थर्टी एट जून वॉट इज द कैरिंग अमाउंट कैरिंग अमाउंट इज टू जीरो टू फाइव हंड्रेड करेक्ट आई होप यूर क्लियर विद दिस अभी इस स्टेट पे वी डोंट ट्रांसफर एट अ कैरिंग अमाउंट वी ट्रांसफर एट अ फेयर वैल्यू फेयर वैल्यू कितना थ्री लैख फिफ्टी सो ऑब्वियसली सिंस वी आर कन्वर्टिंग टू आई पी वट एवर इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू वी टेक टू पी एंड एल सो आई एम गोन टू टेक थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड माइनस टू लैख टू फाइव हंड्रेड सो ये जो भी डिफरेंस है मैंने पी एंड एल क्रेडिट में ले लिया बिकॉज इट्स अ पॉजिटिव डिफरेंस सिंपल मेरा ट्रांसफर कंप्लीट हो गया Now from 30 June 2019, I I show it as an IP under the fair value model. So obviously because it's a fair value model, I won't depreciate. Uh, 30th, 31st December 2019 आ गया. अब वैल्यू ड्रॉप हो गई है और हो गई है थ्री लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड था कितना थ्री फिफ्टी ड्रॉप हो गई थ्री ट्वेंटी तो मैं माइनस लिखूंगी थर्टी थाउजेंड कहा पे सेम ओके सो पी एंड एल डेबिट so this is a small glimpse of how the transfer is done i hope aapko sab kuch samjha hai yes okay now we have disposals okay to aap jab bhi actually sell karoge asset to aap jo bhi aapka profit ya loss hai aap leke jaoge p and l mein theek hai so now there are two steps to do this right uh let's take An example. Ha, let's take this example. Okay, एक साल आपने कर दिया एक्सेस डेप्रीसिएशन अभी आपका है फोर थाउजेंड रिवेल्यूशन से आप इसमें बैलेंस राइट इस एग्जाम्पल पे टू थाउजेंड थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ डिसम्बर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन को अपना कैरिंग अमाउंट कितना एट थाउजेंड राइट ओके ना लेट से वेंट इन टू द मार्केट एंड आई सोल्ड दी एसेड ऑन दिस डे एंड आई सोल्ड इट फॉर लेट से Fifteen thousand. Okay. What is the entry that I pass? First of all, what is the carrying amount? Eight thousand. Sell how much? Fifteen thousand. So obviously there is a profit. Okay. I say very simple bank account debit. How much? Fifteen thousand. Okay. Then I say to uh, carrying amount. How much? So both of these will go into a disposable account. Carrying amount or Uh, accumulated depreciation. You already know how to do the disposal account का thing. ठीक है? So two asset account and two accumulated depreciation. अब ये accumulated depreciation कौन सा consider करेंगे? हमने पहले का तो पूरा accumulated depreciation remove कर दिया है ये दो सालों का. तो obviously ये तो नहीं consider करेंगे. तो सिर्फ इस साल का accumulated depreciation हम consider करेंगे. समझा? तो इस साल का accumulated depreciation कितना आया? Four thousand. Correct. एसेट हमारे बुक्स में आज कौन से वैल्यू पे है हमारे बुक्स में है आठ एट थाउजेंड ओके अक्यूमुलेटेड डेप्रीसिएशन ले लिया फोर थाउजेंड सो व्हाट इज द प्रॉफिट आई टेक प्रॉफिट आई टेक इज द डिफरेंस थ्री थाउजेंड नाउ वेयर डिड आई गेट दिस थ्री थाउजेंड फ्रॉम ओके दिस थ्री थाउजेंड इज बेसिकली द डिफरेंस वॉट वी गेट आफ्टर डिडक्टिंग ऑल ऑफ दिस ओके अब जब ये प्रॉफिट रियलाइज हो गया है So we need not keep this amount in revaluation surplus. We can transfer it to the retained earnings because now this profit has been realized. So what is the entry I pass? A revaluation surplus account debit to RE. My ये जो भी reserves है वो अभी realize हो गए हैं. तो मैं actual earnings दिखा सकती हूँ. Correct? So four thousand मैंने ले लिया. ये मैंने यहाँ से निकाल दिया. और मेरे रिटर्न रिटर्निक्स में ऐड कर दिया बिकॉज दिस इज माई एक्चुअल प्रॉफिट नाउ सो एज यू कैन चेक इफ वी एड फोर थाउजेंड एंड थ्री थाउजेंड दिस इज द एग्जैक्ट डिफरेंस बिटवीन द सेल वैल्यू एंड द कैरिंग अमाउंट ओके सो इन दिस मैनर वी डू द डिस्पोजल ऑफ एसेट्स डिस्क्लोजर रिक्वायरमेंट्स है आई वुड लाइक यू टू डिस्कलोजर डिस्कलोजर रिक्वायरमेंट ऑन यूर अगर आपको कुछ दिक्कत लगी यू कैन डेफिनेटली कम टू मी बट ये तो सिंपल है बस थियोरी है आपको बस यू जस्ट हैव अ लुक इट Now the last concept that we'll encounter today is borrowing costs. So let's dive into it. So what are exactly borrowing costs? 
foreign costs are the costs that relate to acquiring, constructing or producing a qualifying asset. So if you're going to purchase an asset, but you don't have liquid funds or you're constructing an asset and you take a loan. Uh, so if you're acquiring, constructing, purchasing an asset, but you borrow a loan, then that is the interest in it will be treated under this IS. Now, qualifying asset is which is basically an asset customized for you. So even if you purchase it, it has taken a substantial time to uh, get ready. If you have constructed it, it has taken a substantial time to get ready. Substantial time is generally more than 12 months, more than one year. Okay. <clears throat> so what kind of borrowing costs are eligible for capitalization? So this IS basically says that whatever interest costs you incur on this asset, which you've taken a loan for, whether you have acquired it or constructed it, the interest cost will be capitalized. But what are the conditions for capitalization of this? Okay, capitalize the actual borrowing cost less any investment income that you have incurred on the temporary investment. What do I mean by this? Let's say <clears throat> you have a qualifying asset. What is a qualifying asset? Which, take, uh, which takes more than one year to get ready. Let's say you're constructing it. So you started the construction 1st of June 2019. And you finished it on 1st of June 2021, right? So obviously, uh, you took two years. So, sorry, uh, less than two years, 23 months. So yes, it is a qualifying asset, okay? So you can capitalize the interest cost. Now, let's say you uh, took a loan on 1st of May 2019. So can you capitalize from 1st of May or 1st of June? So obviously, 1st of June when the uh, work commenced, okay? Why am I writing this? I'll tell you in a minute. So, 1st of June, obviously, when the work started, you can capitalize it, not 1st of May. Okay. Second case, let's say the loan was taken on 1st of July. So, will you start on 1st of June or July? Obviously, 1st of July, because it's the interest in it. So, basically, whichever is later. Okay. Now, let's say 1st of June uh, to 1st of April 2020. So, but 1st of April to 1st uh, of, let's say, September, because of the pandemic. So in this time, the uh, construction was suspended. It, if it was suspended, you cannot capitalize the interest there because kaam chali nahi tha, and you know that. So these funds were not used. So meanwhile, you invested them in some bonds or something. So what the IS says is that just interest expense we are capitalize karne ke de rahe, because that is your interest expense. But these funds invested somewhere would give you investment income. This will be deducted from your interest expense. So jitna time ke liye aapne funds invest kiye, this investment income will be deducted from your expense. Okay. This is the story if the funds are specifically borrowed for that asset. But if they are not borrowed for that uh, asset, that is, if there are two or loans which you are using this asset, ke liye use kar ya, then you will do the weighted average borrowed cost. I will give you an example to show how the weighted average cost is taken. Okay. First, let's understand few terms. Commencement is, as I said, whichever is later. You starting the work or taking the loan, whichever is later. Suspension, if your work has been disrupted in the beach, then our work has suspended period. Ho gaya. Or seize, seizing capitalization seizes where substantially all the activities to make the asset ready are complete. As I have substantially done, shayad koi minor, let's say a building, bana rahe, to shayad koi minor windows, ka kaam, ya thoda sa painting, finishing work, bacha hai, that is okay. Substantially jab complete, hua hai, tab aapko capitalization ban karna padega, okay? So it does not matter full work, it matters the substantial work, right? Borrowing cost, okay. So this is an example where we have two loans jaha pe, uh, no, sorry, okay, this is two phases. On 1st of January 2016, we borrowed 1.5 million, okay, uh, to finance the production of two assets, asset alpha and asset beta, both of which will take a year to build. So both of them are qualifying assets. We have to check that first. Work started during 2016. The loan was taken on 1st of January. So both are matching. And 1st of January, say 1st of July, mein, itna kaam hua hai. as Alpha ke upar 250 million use hua hai, uh, Bravo ke upar 500 million use hua hai. So, Alpha 
and Bravo. So we took a loan of 1500 lakhs, out of which first six months mein, Alpha ke upar 250 use hue and Bravo ke upar 500 use hue. Matlab 750 are used and 750 are not used. Right? Next six months mein, Alpha ke upar 250 use hue and beta, Bravo ke upar 500 use hue. So next six months mein puri tarike se loan use ho gaya hai. Coming to 1500. Right? Alright. The rate of loan was 9% and investment fund is 7%. Why are they giving you investment obviously because in first six months mein, ye jab 750 other funds ideal the, so we would have invested in the first six months correct so we need to consider it now how to do the capitalization okay pehle lete hai, pehle six months ka. that is to 30th of june wala. Okay? so uh, they've taken five lakh divided by 10 lakh into 90 percent 5 lakh divided by 15 lakh. Okay. So, borrowing cost, both the assets ka lete hai. Pahle alpha ka lete hai. bravo ka lete hai. Okay. To 31st December tak, humare borrowing cost kete hai. Obviously, irrespective of whether we use the money or not, the interest will be charged. So, interest charge hoga kab se? 1st of uh, January say till 31st of December. So, is may say kitna ham alpha ko leke jayenge or kitna beta ko bravo ko leke jayenge. Okay. So, interest charge ho jayega at what rate? At uh, 9%, right? So, total interest will be 1500 into 9%, which is 135. Now, out of which, 1500 out of which, alpha used 500. So, 500 divided by total of 1500 multiplied by interest which is 135 clear so alpha used 45 interest i hope this is clear bravo on the other hand used uh, 1000 out of 1500 funds so bravo ka hum allocate allo karenge interest of 90 so in this manner pure saal ka interest expense ho gaya but out of which 6 months these uh, funds were invested somewhere so hum investment income kam karenge Investment income kitna hua hai? Pehle 6 mahinon mein 750 to use hua hai. Toh 750 humne invest kar diya. Baki ka. Aur uske upar interest kitna hai? 7%. Correct? So ye aa gaya 52.5. Right? Now out of 52.5, how much will go to alpha? Okay. Alpha ke idle funds kitna hai? Not 500. Idle funds are only 250. Out of total of how much? 750. This is used, so remaining is 750. Amount same, is like confused. So that is why I wrote that. <coughs> Alpha ke remaining funds kitna? 250. Out of total of how much? 750. Or interest kitna? 52.5. So Alpha ko kitna interest milega? Investment income se? 17.5. Yeha minus kar denge. Interest expense se. Uh, Bravo on the other hand, cattle funds 500. Hai out of 750 investment income kitna 52.5 so bravo ke kitne kam honge 35 correct so capitalized expense kitna jo bhi net hai wo alpha ka capitalized hai jo bhi net hai wo bravo ka capitalized hai okay i hope both of this is clear 8750 wait a second we have had different amounts for 17.5 हाँ हमने six months का factor ले लिया है पहले सिर्फ six months के लिए invest हुआ ना ये पूरे साल के लिए नहीं invest हुआ है तो we have to be careful of that as well the funds were ideal only for six months so I'm just simply going to do it into six by twelve uh, 500 divided by total fund of 750 into interest of 750 into so we have 500 divided by 750 multiplied by total interest of 52.5 to 6 months correct 
So in this way, we got the interest capitalization to be 36 to 50 and 70 to 500. Abhi aaram se suno and with practice you will get this how to do it step by step. But make sure that abhi aapko ye samjha hai. Okay. So expenditure capitalized is total 36.25 plus to actual expense wa 500 or bravo ko hua 1000. Right. Alright. Now what do we do when we use two or more loans for the same asset? Jaisi yaha pe 1st January or 31st December mein ek 10% ka loan already le liya hai aur ek 9.5% का लोन ले लिया दोनों का अमाउंट अलग है कंस्ट्रक्शन स्टार्ट हुआ 1st ऑफ जनवरी को क्वालिफाइंग एसेट है एक्सपेंडिचर वाज 30 मिलियन ऑन 1st ऑफ जनवरी एंड 20 मिलियन ऑन 1st ऑफ अक्टूबर ओके सो हाउ डू कैलकुलेट द बोरिंग कॉस्ट सो पहले तो दोनों लोन्स का रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट अलग है सो वी हैव टू यूज द वेटेड एवरेज वेटेड एवरेज कैसे करेंगे 10% जो लोन है वो है कितने वैल्यू पे 120 and 9.5% is how much value is 80 so uh, total is 200 right so I simply take out the interest of both of them and is 80 into 9.5 divided by 100 okay so the total interest is 19.6 so if I find out the percent of uh, you know, weighted average percent, it is something as 9.8 percent. When I kya kya, when I do no ko apne interest rates se multiply kar diya, I found out the total. I divided this interest total by the loan amount total. Found out the weighted average interest rate. Okay. Abhi weighted average interest rate hume capitalization ke liye use karna hai. To first January se 31st December, pure saal ka interest lagega on how much amount? 30 million, right? So 30 million into 9.8 percent because ये पैसा पहले day पे use किया है तो वो पूरे साल का उसको capitalization मिलेगा whereas the other 20 million are used from first of October so first of October मतलब my bad this is first of Jan and first of October मतलब only uh, October November December that is only three months so ये हो गया 12 months but ये हो जाएगा सिर्फ three months so what we'll do is how much is the amount 20 million so 20 million into 9.8 percent into only 3 divided by 12 अगर ये दोनों add किया तो I will get a total borrowing cost which is 3.43 okay now since this is general loan we don't need to care about investment because वो already बाकी का investment देखा होगा just इस project के लिए इस asset के लिए utilization कितना है उतना ही हमें we have to take care so we add both of them and we get the capitalization. So that's it from my side. I know there is a lot of content. So you can see the whole chapter and rewind it. And you can see all the concepts. We have PP cover, depreciation, revaluation, investment property, disposal and borrowing cost. If you have any doubt, you can always reach to me. Thank you.